Command Center on the Road in New York is brought to you by Northwest Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of the Washington Commanders. We invite you to stop searching and go Northwest. Check out nwfcu.org slash Washington to see how easy it is to join and how Northwest can help make your money work for you. Stop by a branch or visit nwfcu.org slash Washington today. What's good, Commanders family? Brian Cole Jr. here with Mr. 8 to the 9 Santana Moss, Super Bowl champion Brian Mitchell. We are in the Upper East Side of New York City over at Dorian's. This is Command Center Special New York Edition, where we come in here to talk all things about the game. We oh, yeah. dive in, and we behind enemy lines today, baby. So we got a lot to talk about. Let's first go. things first. We in the Big Apple. We in New York City. Yeah. We ain't in East Rutherford right now. We in New York City. New we York in the mix. City, baby. B makes you smile as soon as you walked in the building. You were singing a song. <laughs> what comes to mind when you think about New York and being out here? I mean, it's the city of, of the lights, you know. And uh, you, I was looking at the, the rundown. It was talking about the baddest New York song out there. And you know, I have two two levels here. You know, when I'm uh, hip hop, B Mitch, I gotta go with hip hop state of mind. Yeah. Mitch Keys. Yeah. But the song, when you really think about New York and you think about the Rat Pack, you go to Frank Sinatra. Yeah. You know? Start spreading the news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving today. Yes, sir. I want to be a part of it. New, New York, York. New, New York. York. Yeah. <laughs> just, that song resonates. You know, when I was here, you could hear it in any type of place. People always discussed it. And... Frank Sinatra is one of the smoothest dudes ever, you know, so I think about that as well. But New York, like at least Key said, if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, That's B-Men big. said Frank Sinatra is one of the smoothest dudes ever. But one of the smoothest dudes I know, Mr. A to the 9, <laughs> Santa Mars, baby. Now, your feelings with New York are a little different. You got drafted here. Yeah, I got drafted here. Your brother here. played out here, so you yeah. got a lot of experience with New York. Talk about that a little bit and about how you feel about this city when you pull up. Well, just, just from my experience alone, having the experience... I left on a good note. Yeah. You know, I left putting some good stuff on film. Um, I went out there. I, I torched the field when I was healthy. Yeah. But my feelings coming into New York, <laughs> it wasn't the same. You know what I mean? <laughs> Being a young 18-year-old, 19-year-old, uh, I think I was I was actually probably 20. Yeah. I got a chance to come here uh, for a Big East uh, senior breakfast-like gathering yeah. from all the different colleges in our division. And I didn't like... You know, my visit, it was jury, <laughs> it was nasty out, and yeah. I was like, man, get me out of here. <laughs> and one of the guys that played with me, one of, the, <laughs> one of the guys that played with me, he was like, bro, shut up, you're going to be here next year. That's crazy. And lo and behold, I was here. And I'm like, all I had was him in my mind when I got drafted. Like, yeah. you talking about getting drafted and kind of like having a stale face? It wasn't because of New York itself. It was just like, someone told me this. And I had other things in my in the back of my head. Yeah. So, but um, but, but but just to put all that to the side, when I got up here and finally started playing, it was great. Yeah. And the thing that B Misses talked about, if you can if you can play here and play good here, yeah, yeah. play anywhere. So when I was able to leave and get traded, I knew I was gonna go dominate wherever I was going because I went through hell here. Yeah. These fans, yeah. these fans make you get up every Sunday and go out there and give it your all because yeah. they not taking nothing less. So I tip my head off to the fans here for that. I tip my head off to everybody who I can still call and when I come in town yeah. because they show me love then, they still show me love now. Yeah, and and B Mitch gave us a couple songs, a couple New York tunes. Right? <laughs> yeah. You got us, I don't know if you, I know you're right about to sing. Yeah, but I don't, you won't give us a tune yeah, yeah. or something. I'm um so he, he, he said one of them, yep. um, Empire State of Mind. Yeah. And then one of my favorites, it's not like typically a, a song that people go to for New York. Yeah. But Fat Joe, he was one of my favorite rappers up That's here. The, lean, the yeah. lean Back song was like the thing up here, Lean yeah. Back, yeah. Lean Back. So <laughs> I got to give him a shout out for that. And also um, Jim Jones and them boys up here with balling and stuff like that. Like some of those songs, right? Resonate to me just from the time I was up here. Yeah, man, a lot of history out here, I know here, we talk man. football. When you think New York, you think the Rucker Park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rucker Park. <laughs> they try to say this the Mecca for basketball, but I'm not too sure. Being a Cali kid, sometimes I like to think Cali's the Mecca. But you know when you're talking football? So let's get right into it, right? Go. We got the New York Giants. They're 1-5. Yeah. However, I think we can all agree 
They're not really the one in five team you think of. It's not one of those things where we're just walking in here yeah. thinking we're going to get an easy W. There's a lot of things going on with this team, so let's talk about it a little bit. First things first, what are your first thoughts about the Giants when you see them and see kind of the season they've had? A very slow start for them. Last year they had a lot of things working in their favor. This year is not. But ultimately when you look at that team, they're one in five. Yeah. They lost to five playoff teams from last year. Yeah. Their defense is not bad. You saw them take the uh, Buffalo Bills to the to the to the to the brink. Yeah. Yeah. Their offense has lost a lot of people on the, on the offensive line. And when you lose your offensive line and you you don't have much to go. Yeah. Their quarterback is banged up now, but they still have that dude number twenty six, Saquon Barkley. Yeah. You saw in the last game they played. Yeah. They were losing. No, he wasn't playing that well, but then all of a sudden, 32 yards, 26 yards. The dude still can get it, but we're going to have to play. This is the type of game I think you can get caught up yeah. thinking like, oh, they wounded. But one thing you heard about the jungle and anywhere else, a wounded animal is the most dangerous animal you can get. Amen. Yeah. You got to be worried about them. Yeah. Well, I think we can't get caught up because coming into this game, they got our number. You know, we haven't beaten these guys in a long time. And regardless of how beat up they are, they circled us on they 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 schedule like yeah. this is when 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 we get right this is yeah. the get right game yeah, yes, yes, so yes. we have to have that mentality man that these guys have been a bully yeah you know we talked about this in Philly we went up there and handled Philly before they weren't much the bully but they was the bully of our division right. because they went to the Super Bowl and they kind of pretty they much the team to beat bingo. Yeah. But these guys are really the bully <laughs> out of this division. <laughs> the Giants is the team that plays with us, do what they want to do yeah. with us. So I'm hoping to see our guys come energetic with a different mindset and knowing that, look, I care less of what their record is. We got to take it to them. He talked about that offensive line being in shambles. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why they who they are right now. Defensively, they flying around. Mm -hmm. yes. They getting after the football. Then you look at the offensive side of the ball, Saquon was hurt a couple of times, yep. too. I mean, I mean, for a few games. Yeah. So you get him back now healthy. You got a healthy Saquon. You find a way to say whoever's going to be your quarterback, Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, both of those guys are capable to, of, of going out there having productive games. You got Slayton as a receiver. You got Waller as a tight yeah. end. You have the guy Don, Donnell, Donnell Jones or something yeah. like that, yeah. or Williams or something yeah. like that, number 17. Yeah. Phenomenal receiver, slot yeah. receiver. So they have guys just like us that can go out there and get the job done. So we got to take it to them. And you, and you mentioned that offensive line, and you mentioned Saquon Barkley as well. Offensive line hasn't been great. However, Saquon misses three games, comes back last week, gets 96 yards on 24 carries. Yeah. So he ain't hurt no more. His ankle's fine. Exactly. The boy's good, right? Boy can play. And we've seen how we've kind of gone against running backs. Be Mitch, I'm going to start with you. Saquon Barkley, what test does he bring to Probably. us with such a strong rushing attack that he brings with these Giants? Well, the thing team? about him, he can go the distance. So yeah. you have to rally around him and get to him early. I can recall playing back in the day against the Giants, playing against Dave Meggett. Yeah. Dave Meggett was a little jitterbug. If you didn't get him down early, he's going to hurt you. Yeah. You know, he would hurt us in many ways, running the ball, throwing damn touchdowns, all kinds of things. But Saquon Barkley can not only hurt you in the passing game, I mean the running game, yeah. he can also hurt you in the passing game. Yeah. Yeah. He'll take a screen and go 75 yeah. on you. We've seen it in FedEx Field. We've seen him do things to us here in uh, this stadium here. So we have to be a defensive-minded team that's going to rally around. One guy can't get it. Have other guys flying to the ball. Mm -hmm. First guy, wrap him up. Second guy, you come. We have a tendency to try to rip the ball out with the first guy. Yeah. Yeah. These, uh, uh, NFL running back is going to, you rip the ball, he's going to keep running. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So we can run down the field for another 10 yards while you're ripping at the ball. You wrap me up and somebody come hit me, now I got to be concerned about the football. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Saquon is just one of those guys. He's a difference maker. So, like I said before, this team coming, hunting. They ready. They ready to go eat against yeah. us. And we got to be the bigger guy. We got to make sure that we bring it to them. Yeah, and it's not just Saquon Barkley, right? They got Daniel Jones back there. However, Daniel Jones <laughs> is not expected to play. We don't know for sure we're yet. Not, yeah, we're He's not still sure. still questionable, but they're saying on ESPN that it's a very long shot. He, he, had he, a injury. he hadn't been hit yet. And, he, <laughs> and, and they are saying you, he's not uh, cleared to get hit. With a neck injury, I don't think. If he hadn't passed yeah. practice, he's going to play. Yeah. That's the way I'm looking at it. That's how I feel, too. Daniel right? Jones on Tyrod, I believe it's a threat still. Tyrod, to me, he distributed the ball a little different yep. than Daniel. He's yep. a guy, one, two, three, getting the ball to the open guy. So that's something else you got to be ready for. I mean, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's putting it on film. So now we've seen it a couple of uh, weeks. But Daniel, for some odd reason, he just gets a, he finds a way to out get us to the punch, beat us to the punch when it he comes does. in the yeah. run game. Yeah. Like, 
everything breaks down for Dan. Guess what he does? He finds 15, 20, 30 yards right. with his feet. So uh, I'm not sure what, what's going to happen come Sunday when mm. it comes to which quarterback up. But I know Tyrod is a guy, too, that you got to be mindful of because he's a guy. You saw him last week. He getting rid of that ball to the open guy. Yeah, he is, yeah. And when he scrambles, he scrambles to find the guy that's yeah. down the field instead of running him with, you know, with the football. Right. And Tyrod Taylor, savvy vet. Yeah. Former pro bowler. Yeah. Led Buffalo to the playoffs, which was yes. rare back then, right before Josh Allen yeah. got there. Tyrod is 26, 26 and 1 yeah. in his entire career wow. as a starter, which means this guy can win. Now, we see what Daniel Jones does. Daniel Jones has had our number, right? Yeah. But let's yeah. talk about Tyrod a little bit and what a player like that, because adds a little, he's a little different than Daniel Jones. Yeah. He adds a little few more wrinkles. B Mitch, what do you expect to see from Tyrod Taylor tomorrow well, if he as plays? Sam said, he's the type of guy who spreads the ball around. Tyrod Taylor is trying to get the ball into the hands of his playmakers. He's not a guy that's trying to go out there and run around. Now, he's very capable of running around. But when he scrambles, he keeps his eyes down the field. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing about him is this. You're caught up with the Giants. When they when their quarterbacks break the pocket, Daniel Jones, he runs. And when you look at that film, you're going to see a lot of that with Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. Tyrod Taylor, on the other hand, when he breaks the pocket, you have to be hesitant. Yeah. Is he running or is he going to throw it? Yeah. So if you get caught up with Daniel, you're going to attack him. He dump it over the top. He's a guy that, like, like they, he don't necessarily win the game for you, but he doesn't lose it. Yeah. Which means now the defense has to make all the right yeah, moves. Right, right. Yeah. He, he said he hit it spot on. He's going to make the right decision. So just know that he's not looking to get outside the pocket at times. So what we have to do is keep him in it. You know yep. what I mean? Make yeah. sure we condense the pocket. Make sure those guys inside. Look, we're talking about offensive line play. Their offensive line is in shambles. Is, so this is should is. be our game that we hunt. Exactly. But also with our, our defensive guys up front being mindful that they can go hunt, also got to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. Make sure you're not getting too far outside of your lanes trying to get that sack because you got a guy, like I said before, capable when he breaks the pocket, he looking for that open guy. Yeah, yeah. And that pocket might get broken a lot because yeah. Daniel Jones – is the second most sacked quarterback in the NFL. Y'all know yeah. who the first one is? Oh, uh, yeah. Sam Howell. Sam Howell, unfortunately, right? But we're going to focus right now <laughs> on Daniel Jones getting sacked. And so Tyrod Taylor, clearly, like you said, offensive lines in shambles. How does our defense counteract that and, and capitalize off of such a weak offensive line? Tan, I'll start with you. I think this got to be discipline, like I said before. Not go out here thinking that I have to go out and do something myself. Right. Play within the scheme. You know, one of the things that I see that when we play well up front, it's because everybody is playing off each other. Yeah. Communicating with each other, letting them know, I'm going to play off you, you play off me. Don't go out there and say, I'm just going to go out here and run wild right. and try to get a sack, and then boom, you got a gaping hole here, you left open, yeah. and, they, and they take advantage of it. So I think our defense guys up front have to be disciplined, play within the scheme, and I believe that some of the coverage that we're going to present it's going to allow them to get those sacks. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Some of those covers is going to open up. I think our defense uh, secondary a couple of weeks ago had put so much bass up on tape to where they had to correct their self. Yeah. Saw them last week on a different approach. They got their hands on three passes. So yeah. now, coming forward, that builds their confidence yeah. up. So now, I'm pretty sure that Jack Del Rio not going to leave these guys out there knowing that the, a few weeks ago, I left them out there by themselves. Yeah. He, he had more uh, favorable coverages where our defensive guys up front could go out there and hunt. Yeah. You want to answer that? Yeah, well, I think I, I, I agree with Tanner solely. It's about being disciplined. Okay, they have guys playing positions that don't play them all the time. They will make a mistake. Yeah. So if you're playing discipline as one unit, you're going to look into more things yeah. than you would if you go out there on your own. So this D-line right here, I know that people are questioning them. They are yeah. questioning them definitely because we watch games. We look at certain guys take over football games. We haven't done that yet this yeah. year. Yeah. So now you're playing against a team that's a little wounded, and if you go out there and you overhype and overplay like an individual, yeah. you mess up. Yeah. If they just stick to their their, their, their um their scheme, stick to the things they've been taught, their fundamentals, and go as one, they can have a big game. Man, and yeah. Santana mentioned the secondary. A big key for you last week was taking care of the tight end. We had the John Lou Smith, we had Kyle Pitts. I think yeah. he did a fair job. Yeah. Now we have a Darren Waller, who's essentially a receiver, right? He's just yeah. a big he's receiver, tall. and he's yeah. a big dude that's he's fast. He's not as fast as those other dudes, though. Not as fast as yeah. other dudes, but he can still make it. And yeah. he was one of the top receivers not even too long ago when he was with the Raiders. Yeah. How do our, how does our secondary and our linebackers, how do they build off our already strong week that they had last week? Last week you saw when when you watching uh, um, uh, Cody and also uh, Jamin. Uh, Jamin when, when those guys go out there and get their mind right, get in the right mindset, 
They can run with anybody. Yeah. You know? And I think that's all you got to do. You have to remember what you did last week and try to build off of that. Yeah. You know? Not come out here and, oh, now, I'm good. Now I'm going to go go through, show, show my great I am. No, no, no. Go with the same mindset you had last week and be in his back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jamie was in the dude's pocket and got the interception. All you have to do, if he's the guy and you, he can't outrun you, go everywhere he goes. He can't lose you, mm. you know, and then you make that play when it comes down. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, talking about Waller, Waller's one of those guys that I've been, I've been watching him closely because you see he got a big contract to come over here. Yeah, he did. But he hasn't been comfortable yet. You know, mm. you can see it in his play. Yeah. They're forcing it to him, trying to see the guy who they saw on the other team, and he haven't showed up yet. So I think you got to continue to make him uncomfortable. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Put hands yeah. on him a lot. Press him. Be in his face because he – He's playing like as if something going to, you know, like he's faster than everything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I've been watching close. I've been keeping a close eye on them. And they're going to keep chunking it at them. Yes, and with will. that being said, put your hands on them. Thump them every now and then. Yeah. You have to get into his head because I think right now he's in his own head. So I want to see how our approach is to him. See that we got guys up in his face to, to, allow, to not allow him to get comfortable on us. Because you know how it is. Yeah. Every time we play somebody, whatever they was doing before, they find a way to, you know, put that behind yes, them yeah. and, and have one of their better games. I, I'm hoping, I'm praying that that's not the case this week, yeah. you know, when it comes to Waller. Yeah, and to your point, Waller hasn't gotten comfortable. It seems his offense really hasn't gotten comfortable. Yeah. They're last in passing touchdowns. Mm. And outside of last week, we haven't really seen our secondary really blossom, really yeah. grow yet. This could be a big game for them to show out, especially these young guys. What do you expect to see just from our secondary as a whole? Be Mitch, I'm going to start with you. I, I, I think that they're going to try to build off of what they uh, did last week. Uh, Kenda Fuller was a little banged up during the week, but he's playing. Yeah. And I think Kenda is veteran enough player to tell a guy, listen, man, this is what we're capable of. Yeah. I heard uh, Benjamin St. Juice say, we now know what the bar is. Mm. They said it last week. Yeah. He said, we have shown what we can do. This is what we should expect. Yeah. I am with him 100%. Once you show what you're capable of, now that's what you need to expect to do. Yeah. Not just us as fans, but them as individuals. And the fact that a player said it tells me that all week they were preaching that. Yeah, yeah. preaching So now the mindset is, look, man, this is what we can be. This is what we are. Because right. sometimes when you grow up, you know, when you grow up in your hood, you see somebody in your hood make it. Yeah. yeah. Now you know I can do this. I can do it. Yeah. Okay? So they saw what happened last week. So every player on that team in the, in the secondary should be thinking, I can do this. Right. And you got some guys up front that can also enhance that. Yeah. So either you're covering it a little longer so they can get a sack. Right. Or they rush a little quicker so you can get an interception. Yeah. But that stuff got to work hand in hand. Yeah. And Tanner, on the flip side of that, you've been that receiver yeah. that was in the room understanding, okay, this offense isn't cooking yet. I haven't gotten the touchdowns. We're not scoring a lot. But we're coming against a defense that has a young secondary that is known to give up the plays every now and then. You've been that receiver in that room. Yeah. What is that like? What's New York coming out looking at our defense and saying, this is what we're going to get done today? Well, their coach probably telling them we're we, we, we going to have opportunities. Yeah. We're going to have opportunity, but – they have guys up front that's going to make it hard for us. Yeah. So get to your spot. Yeah. Yeah. Beat your man in the line of scrimmage. Get off a of press. You know, he's going to be tapping on all those type of things and catch the ball when it's coming. Yeah. We're not going to get that many opportunities, right. so catch it when it comes your way. And that's what it is. And those guys know. You know, those guys are familiar with these guys. Right. You know, most of the guys that's here Slayton, those guys have seen these guys numerous of times. He's a very valuable wide receiver on that team that's not starting to make some noise also. So I'm hoping that our secondary can say, Last week was a breath of fresh air. Yeah. They got that behind them. Now let's move forward. Let's 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 get in that cab again this week and have that same kind of performance. And I'm pretty sure they up for the challenge. And guys, it's been fun talking defense, but I'm with two offensive stars, right? Uh -huh. I'm with two offensive legends. So I think it's time to move on to that offense. Is that cool with y'all? School y'all? Let's go. All right, man. We mentioned Sam Howe. Most sacked quarterback in the league, however. Had his first three touchdown game as a starter. Big deal for Sam Howe. What have y'all seen from y'all quarterback? Said Ted, I'm gonna start with you. I just seen growth. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Besides the sacks, every week this guy's getting better. Yeah. You know, um, I was listening to uh, EB the other day on the radio, and he was saying some things that you know that was asked of him, like, "Hey, you want to see this?" And I think JP was the one that asked the question. It was a great question, yeah. and 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 it was a great uh, answer. He basically said, "You know, we in a world that we want to see stuff happen right now." But as a coach, he's been seeing this guy steady get better. 
doing some of the things that he's he's been preaching and teaching mm -hmm. throughout the weeks is showing up on the field and it's showing up in the film room. So uh, I'm loving that I see the maturity myself. Like yeah. I can honestly sit yeah. where I'm sitting at and seeing this guy grow. Yeah. I saw a couple of games where he must be heard everybody talking about him stepping into the pocket yeah. a little more. Yeah. He did that. He did the next yeah. week he regrets a little bit and tried to get up out of it. But that's going to happen. When yeah. you're young, sometimes you in your own head just as much as others yeah. in your head. Yeah. So, But I, I, I like um, the maturation that I've been seeing thus far. I think besides the sacks, if we can – Put an end to that, <laughs> which is probably not going to be this year. But if we could put the end to that and minimize that, because I think that's really our Achilles heel when it comes to uh, those extended drives. Yeah. When you get sacked that many times, like no matter how many plus plays you have, that one negative play can damage everything that yeah. you you know yeah. you had just went out there and grabbed. You yeah. know, so um, if, if we could put an end to that, minimize those, and him minimizing just getting rid of the ball, like right. having to think so long. Then, then, then we can see him really, you know, get, go around that curve. But I, but I'm loving what I'm seeing thus far. And to Tanner's point, if we can put an end to that, any time to do that would be right now. The yeah. Giants are the last team in sacks. Yeah. They have five of them. Four of them goes to one guy, Thibodeau. That's got to give you confidence as the a young quarterback, right? Atlanta was too. Yeah, yeah. Atlanta was too. So <laughs> the thing I'm saying is, exactly. I, yeah. I know exactly what yeah. Tanner's talking about when Eric was talking. Yeah. The only person that can correct this thing fast is Sam Howell. Yeah. And, and that's not that – he's right. Sam has matured drastically in all aspects of the game. Yeah. Except the sacks. Because still Sam Howell, the young guy, is still thinking, I'm athletic enough to make it happen. Yeah. But Sam Howell, the quarterback, has to understand – when that, I'm looking for the guy to open. He's not open, I got a dump off here. The most important thing for any young quarterback is knowing where your where your safety valves are. Yeah. yeah. And if they're not open yet, hit it. Because I don't care who your line is, in about three seconds or less, that ball better be flying. Yeah. <laughs> when you get around three seconds, you got to be trying to find out the safety valve. Yeah. And if he does that, he, he helps his offensive line out which begins to get confidence, yeah. then they block better. Yeah. Then all of a sudden now he can hold it for 3.2 instead of have to get rid of it at 2.2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's the whole thing where he is still, I know what the coach is telling me, but I know I'm good enough yeah. to wait and try to make something happen. You're not in college anymore. Yeah. That guy that you can outrun, you can't outrun the guy this time. Mm -hmm. The guy that you can wait and slide past him, these guys are much better than that. So you got to all do everything in time with timing. Yeah. If you do that, it works out very mm -hmm. positive for you. And let me add, Logan Thomas, he's going to be one of those yeah. guys that Safety you got to go to yeah. him. He, yeah. I mean, especially with this defense. This defense up front is going to get after him too. Logan Thomas should be one of those guys that he get very comfortable with in these future games because yeah. you got him right there. Yeah. He's a big guy. You can't miss him. You can throw it high yeah. wherever yeah. you want to yeah. throw it at. He has a huge catch radius. So find Logan Thomas early and often and get in the rhythm with him because he's going to be the guy that's going to be able to allow you to get out of some of those situations. Yeah, and another safety valve, which we didn't really talk about a lot coming into this season. We talked about Terry. We talked about Jahan a lot. But the safety valve has been Curtis. Yeah. Curtis Samuel has kind of shown, especially touchdowns-wise, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's the, the unsung guy. hero right Curtis now. Curtis is the yeah. unsung hero. So let's sing about him just a little bit. Tan, I'm going to start with you. Talk about Curtis Samuel, what you see from the young brother kid. We in New York, right? Yeah. He's Brooklyn's finest. Yeah. Talk about what you see from the young, young kid. I mean, he's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. I mean, what can he not do? You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, what can he do? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He's a guy that I don't even necessarily want to see him do anything but just get the ball in his hands. He get finds hands. a way yeah. to yeah. make something happen. And I was I, I was laughing watching the game last week because I'm like, I remember right before we started the season, I was like, hey, we've been talking a lot about Jahan and Terry, but don't forget who we got, Curtis Samuel over yeah. there. He's easily, <laughs> we just saying he's the number three, but he could be number two or one For real. if we give him our opportunity. So it's funny just to see him kind of have that kind of season and not being the guy that we talked about coming into the season. But I'm loving what he's been bringing to the team. Um, when you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, when they had Nicole Hardman there, yeah, yeah. he's that guy. He, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, and to me, he might not be as fast as Nicole Hardman, but uh, he's – He's to me more lethal. Yes. With yes. the ball in his hands. Stronger. He's a run, he's an yeah. ex-running back, yeah. so he knows how to run well between the tackles, outside, you know, you name it. Yeah. But uh he's just been a valuable asset for our offense and 
Each week, I believe that EB knows that, and that's why his role has grown. Mm, and you, you're a big fan of Curtis as well. You yeah. want to talk about Curtis a little bit? Well, the thing about it is, like, I, when Tanner said about when you look at the offense of Kansas City, they always find a guy who can go back and forth, receiver, running back. Yeah. And he fits that exactly. So Curtis came in here, was hurt his first year. Yeah. Dealt with some injuries the second. He's healthy. Yes. Okay? Yes. He's healthy. He's healthy, and now he's doing exactly what he did before he got here. Yeah. He's doing everything we expected of him because he's healthy. One thing we, as fans and as people that cover the team, when someone gets hurt, you don't understand. Like they're they're playing against the athletes of the highest. Uh, uh, um, skill set. Yeah. yeah. And when you're hurt, you can't go out there and do something. And beat him. Him. Yeah. Now he's healthy, and he's ready to go with it, and he makes himself available. Yes. Listen, Curtis Samuels, just like Tanner and I, he's a competitor. Yes. yes he yes. heard everybody talking about Jahan. He heard him talking about Terry. Yeah. Although that's his boys. Hell, what about me? Yeah. yeah. So he's making sure he get open. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, not, let me get in on the action. Yeah. Straight up and down. Exactly. Yeah, because he's not only healthy now, he's hungry. And another guy that's yeah. healthy and hungry this year and that's really came out going, Brian Robinson. Yeah. Granted, he's only had 20 carries the last two games, but now he's going against a Giants team that is last against rushing against rushing offenses, right? They've given up over 120 yards in every game they played. Brian Robinson hasn't gotten the ball as much as we'd like. I think that's a lot to do with the way that the games have gone. What do you expect to see from Brian Robinson being Mitch? I'm going to start well, with Brian's you. Well, Brian's going to run. He's going to run hard yeah. as he uh, always does. But they have to have success early. Okay, and I say that because when you don't have success early in the running game, you end up getting in third and long. Yeah. And then that's the hardest down ever. And then the other team starts, if they move up down the field and get scores, your, your offense coordinator going to say, okay, I got to start catching up. Brian Robinson is going to run hard. Yeah. They, they got to just give him a gap. You saw last week he got the ball in the, little, in the screen pass. The dude was standing at the two, three yard yeah. line. Brian was like, okay, you're going to stand there. I'm going to take an end zone. through you. you know, <laughs> that's, I expect that from him. And then you look at the young buck, yeah. Chris Rob. Yeah. Chris Rodriguez come in, he averaged seven yards a carry. Yeah. He is another one that I know that they love and they want to see. So they got to go out there and make sure early they get some positive yardage to make the coach want to constantly run it. Yes, yes. And then all of a sudden, you get that, that balance. Yeah. I think the Giants have a problem there. Yeah, you know, I think the more we possess the ball, like we if we extend drives, then we have more opportunities to go out there and shove it in his arms, you know yeah. what I mean, or put it in his belly. Um, you know, when you get in those games when you're behind, mm -hmm. it's hard to say, let's run. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we find other ways to kind of get to the run. Screens or finding ways to get those guys outside the you know backfield so they can catch the ball. But um, if, if we get in front of the chains a lot and often, then you will see a lot of B-Rob. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's what I can start seeing now that it's getting a little cool out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the kind of <laughs> ball you want to see. You want to yeah. be, be able to do both. Because we're going to be pass happy. You, yep. you already saw all that. Mm -hmm. But we also have been waiting to really say, we have these backs back here yeah. that any moment now we can just stuff it in their bellies and they can go yeah. do what they do. Yeah. So I'm hoping as long as we continue to possess the football, convert, move the chains, then we can rely or see more opportunities to run yeah. the ball. And, and you talk about not playing behind. The Giants have not scored a touchdown in the first half this season. Oh, so this Lord, don't bring that up. <laughs> Let's why keep you, it that way. Why so, you bring that up right now? <laughs> so ideally, you see a team like that and you say, okay, this is the time to get out to that fast start, kind of like we did in Atlanta. Are you guys expecting a fast start? When you guys are, you guys have been players. Y'all know teams. Y'all see these stats. Do y'all say, okay, this is a team right here. We're going to come out and just give it to them right away. But I'm, you want to do that because the same thing that teams have done to us, got yeah. up on us, then they start running the football. Yeah. Because we have to take the chance. If we can go out and get up on them now, no one would have to ask about, well, why didn't Brian get the ball? They'll start feeding the running game. Because when you get up on a team, what do they do? They're trying to get to the quarterback. They're blitzing. They're taking chances. And if you run the football, yeah. you can break one on them. I want to see us get up so now we can show it. Look, most teams that run the ball effectively, they normally have a lead. Yeah. Yeah. And they run the ball to make sure that they're going to take – the time off the clock to limit your opportunities. If we can do something like that, then we can see what this offense is truly about. Yeah. I mean, most of us go to, you know, we're we're waiting to see that game plan, that first 15, yeah. so we'll know. You can kind of almost know what's going to happen when you watch that, when you look at that first 15. 
when you get that script on the offense, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. I feel where we going right now. You know what I mean? Over, I see my number four or five times. Oh, man, I'm finna get busy. So yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping that that first 15 is very favorable for our guys to yeah. know that, hey, man, we can do something with this. We know what these guys' uh, weaknesses are. We yeah. know what these guys are capable of. With well, this first 15, it favors us to have a, a productive first, you know, first quarter of play. Yeah. So. That's how you really kind of could go into the game and judge or gauge yeah. if you're going to have that kind of fast start. Yeah, yeah. And we're hoping for a fast start. Fellas, I've had some fun with y'all here. We're out at Darien's over in the upper east side of New York. <laughs> we, we where the money's at right now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but before I let you guys go, you know, we got the game tomorrow. We're going to be out on the field. We're going to be behind the enemy lines when we play the New York Giants out in MetLife. What is the key to getting that win, getting the second consecutive road win. B. Mitch, I will start with you. What's the key to winning? The key is to go out there and don't help the Giants. Yeah. In every game we uh, lost them last year and we tied, we helped them. We had time. We had penalties at the wrong time. We turned the ball over at the wrong time. We allowed them to come and have a sack fumble at the wrong time. Yeah. We have to make sure we just handle our business. I'm at the point now where I've seen enough good from this team and the bad to understand if they play their best game, they win the football game. Yeah. If they go out there and mess around and help the other team, they lose. Yeah. So if they could just go through the game and don't do anything that help the Giants, they win the football game. I mean, we're on the road. So I say this every week, no matter what I'm talking about, I always talk about the turnover battle. You got to win that. We're on the road. It's, it's more pivotal that we do that on the road. But also, with that being said is, you know, something that key that, that B. Mitch just talked about is, on paper, we better than these guys. Yeah. So, you know, enough of us talking about Giants having our, our you know, our number. Yeah. Man, when are you as a player going to get into your head that, man, I care less about what they done. Yeah. It's about right now. Yeah. So go out yeah. here and punch these guys in the mouth and be that team that you can be. Yeah. We haven't played our best game yet, offensively or defensively or special teams-wise. Why not tomorrow? Yeah. Be that be that guy be that team tomorrow. Yeah. Play your best in all three favors phases and show the Giants that not so fast. We know what you did to us before, but not yeah. today. Yeah, you heard it from Mr. Keep them on that downward slide. <laughs> yeah, yo, you heard it from me. Be the team you are meant to be. I love this team right here. We will be back out on the field in MetLife yes. for Command Center pregame. And we will also be giving you all the action you need to know about postgame. Me, Venus, Santana Moss. This is Command Center Special New York edition presented by Northwest Federal Credit Union. We have so, had so much fun here. We're going to have a few drinks. We're going to have a little more fun. <laughs> For tomorrow's game, we open for nothing but the best Got my for buddy. our command today. <laughs> <laughs> we out. Command Center on the Road in New York is brought to you by Northwest Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of the Washington Commanders. We invite you to stop searching and go Northwest. Check out nwfcu.org slash Washington to see how easy it is to join and how Northwest can help make your money work for you. Stop by a branch or visit nwfcu.org slash Washington today.